Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our review of the Garmin Forerunner 265. So we've been testing out the Garmin Forerunner 265 over the past month or so now. It's the successor to the Garmin Forerunner 255. It's the middle of the range Garmin Forerunner watch. It was traditionally just a running watch with the 235 and 245, but since the 255 it has become a full triathlon watch as well. The price has jumped with the latest editions of the uh, watch. It's now $429.99 in the UK or $449.99 in the US. There was also a jump from the 245 to the 255, so this is now you know, quite a lot more expensive than the Forerunner 245 in particular. There are two sizes of the watch, but there is no cheaper non-music version anymore. It's just a 265 and the smaller 265S, both of which have music on board. So there are a couple of big new features on the 265 compared to the 255. The first is the bright AMOLED display. You've got a 1.3 inch AMOLED screen on the 465 and a 1.1 inch screen on the smaller 265S. It's similarly bright to the AMOLED screen that we saw introduced on the Epix 2 last year. It's got slightly lower pixel density to, than the one on the Forerunner 965 uh, and it's a lot brighter in general than the memory and pixel display you had on the older Forerunner 255. It's also a touchscreen though you still get the classic five button Garmin design on the watch to make it easier to navigate the menus and then during runs you can turn the touchscreen off if you want to or it's automatically set to turn off so you can just control the watch with the buttons. The other really big addition to the new watch is Garmin's training readiness feature. Let's see how ready I am right now. Hi! Readiness is high today. This is a really good feature that basically takes into account a whole load of stuff the watch is measuring, like your sleep, your recent training history, your training load, your stress through a heart rate variability status, and spits out one number that says how ready you are to train at that time. This was introduced with the 455 last year, but didn't make its way to the 455, unfortunately. Another new feature is the ability to measure running dynamics on the go without using a uh, external sensor. So in the past, you have to connect up something like Garmin's foot pod or the HRM Pro chest strap but now it will measure things like ground contact uh, time vertical oscillation from the wrist on the watch there's also some new fonts and watch faces and a slightly you know upgraded user interface that makes the whole experience feel like a, a new watch and the other change is that it now is a USB-C instead of a USB charger so same plug into the watch they're the classic Garmin plugs so if you've got old chargers you can still use them but the other end is that thin little thing that plugs into uh, USB-C sockets rather than standard USB and that design is quite similar all around to the 4 255 you still got the optical heart rate sensor all the other key sensors like uh, the barometric altimeter and a pulse oximeter. You've got GPS tracking, including Garmin's multiband mode. Uh, still not a full smartwatch, but you have got the Connect IQ app store, NFC payments, music storage, uh, you know, notifications, all that kind of stuff. It also has breadcrumb navigation, but not maps, which is still reserved for the most expensive watches in Garmin's range from the 965 up. And then the other big thing to talk about is obviously battery life, which has taken a hit because you've got the AMOLED display here. The 265S, the smaller watch, has longer battery life than the 265 because of the smaller screen. So you're looking at 13 to 15 days of battery life in watch mode and in GPS only, it's about 20 to 24 hours of battery life. We'll dive into our real world experience of the battery life a lot more later on in the review. So I've been testing the 4Runner 265, so the normal size, and it's been a very comfortable and enjoyable watch to wear 24-7. It's got a very slim, lightweight design. It's nice that you've now got an AMOLED screen on a full sports watch in a smaller device in Garmin's range compared to things like the Epix 2 or even the 965. It's really comfortable to wear this watch all the time. And the screen has been really bright for me in all conditions. Like I've worn this in some bright sunny days, generally not in the UK. I went away to Portugal for a couple of days and I've never had any problems seeing the screen during my runs or at any other time. So during the run, the AMOLED screen isn't a massive upgrade on the transflective memory and pixel display you've got on the older Forerunners. It's really the rest of the time that it comes into its own. So it's just nicer having a bright display like this on your wrist if you're wearing your Forerunner you know, 24-7 I really like having the AMOLED screen there. During the run, you know, it's fine, it's good, it pops, it's certainly bright enough, but it doesn't really add a huge amount compared to the memory and pixel display. Whereas on things like the Epix, I think one area that really benefits uh, on the run from having that AMOLED screen is the maps, which obviously you don't have on this watch, but the breadcrumb navigation is nice and clear. So you've got a similar experience on the run and then a nicer experience outside the run thanks to that AMOLED display. All in all, no concerns at all with the design. Comfortable watch, nice screen. I've enjoyed wearing it as my main watch. So I'll start with the design. I love this little watch. I loved the 255, but the screen, the screen on the 265 really does elevate it. I think when you're wearing it 24 seven, the fact it's touch screen as well, you know, if you're wearing it as a smartwatch and you can just kind of scroll around, it's super responsive. I've really, really enjoyed using this watch. Um, I got the two, 
65s so it's a little bit smaller um, than the 265 and it fits really well on my wrist it's really light it's obviously got this kind of silicone sport strap but like all of the Garmin watches that are newer you can use these little pins and swap the strap if you want something that looks a bit kind of less sporty I guess for day-to-day -day wear um, yeah love to outfit on the wrist loved this larger run button a really clever little design to make this button bigger than these because it just is easy to start and stop and I don't know about you but I think sometimes when you're in the long run and you for, kind of forget what well, maybe it's just me because I test those different watches but you forget what buttons do what this one having it a bit bigger is great in my eyes but yeah design wise loved it GPS, I found the GPS super accurate. I've worn this for a lot of testing with my Phoenix 7 on my wrist, you know, one on each wrist, and they've kind of pinged at the same time. It is a tiny bit slower to connect to the GPS than my Phoenix, but that might just be, needs more updates. And it's still like a minute. It's not like I'm stood outside the house for hours waiting for it to load. Um, the, the screens have changed slightly. I think I said in our first look that Garmin have changed their font and I'm still adapting to that. So the GPS loading screen is a little bit different. Again, not personal preference, you know, not the end of the world, but um, yeah, it definitely, definitely has accurate GPS. I've not had any problems with coming back from a run and it being wildly different to the Phoenix or any other watch I've been testing used it on the track for a session and it was super accurate with that so yeah I've been impressed impressed by this little watch it kind of has all of the accuracy we've come to know and love from Garmin in a little small bright package so GPS tracking has been really good for me I've been ha very happy wearing the 4265 as my main running watch for the last uh, month and a bit it's you know occasionally you get little quirks of GPS like you get of all watches but overall the pacing is very consistent and accurate the distances are accurate I've gone on measured courses with this watch and it's come up pretty much bang on so yeah all in all no concerns at all with gps battery life i use the multiband mode all the time myself and i will say the mode that switches automatically depending on whether you're in good conditions or not now it's a good idea to save battery because a lot of time i am under clear skies and i could just be using the gps only but i never really found it saves that much battery in terms of real life this uh, sat iq auto select mode so i just leave it in multiband just to get the most accuracy at all times good peace of mind and yeah it's a very accurate device on gps so the heart rate tracking has been okay it's, like, it's quite good for an optical sensor like you're never going to get tremendously accurate results all the time from the wrist but with the 265 it's been enough it's been good enough that you could probably use this to guide heart rate based training just using this however you are going to get uh, you know the odd run probably once or even twice a week where it throws out really random numbers so on an easy run your heart rate will read too high and then the easy run gets classified as a tempo run or something like that and I, I just don't like that basically because I do like the training readiness feature on the watch and that along with all the training analysis needs accurate data going in so I would pair a heart rate chest strap or even one of the arm strap ones just to get you know, more reliable results all the time so even those can have their hiccups but basically with this optical sensor it's probably you know 80 80 percent of the time it's going to read well and then you can have 20 percent of slightly odd readings and sometimes downright incorrect readings where it might lock onto your cadence or something like that but with a chest strap you're probably looking at more like 99 98 percent accurate reading and that just gives me a bit more peace of mind to then use the training analysis features on the watch so yeah the heart rate sensor on this i think is better than average for an optical sensor it really is quite reliable at the same time, you are going to get those odd quirks that can uh, be annoying on the run sometimes. Heart rate, again, I haven't worn this with a heart rate strap. I don't really love wearing heart rate straps because I find that they sit where my sports bra is or my backpack is, and they just find them annoying. Um, so I haven't used it with a heart rate monitor, which would be the most accurate test, but I have worn it with my Phoenix, and again, I'm in the same the same zone, you know, if this says 147, my Phoenix is 148, different wrists, do you know what I mean? It's been accurate. Um, there have, you know, probably been a couple of times where the, it's not been reading the heart rate very well, but I, I think you get that with watches if you've kind of, they're not tight enough. Um, so that wouldn't be, wouldn't be a fair thing to judge it down on. That's just me not wearing my watch properly. But yeah, heart rate wise, I found it really accurate. Um, and really bright i think that's one thing again i keep talking about the screen but when you're trying to train to heart rate sometimes you know the when i have my heart rate across the little wheel across the top i think sometimes if it's really sunny you can't quite see in what zone you're in super clear super bright i have the the ring with the colors and then i have the number on the bottom and i found it really easy to see at a glance what heart rate zone i'm in um but yeah i haven't used it with a chest strap so can't say 
for sure, but I have worn it with my Phoenix and I found them spot on, same. So battery life wise, Garmin say for the 265S, this has 15 days of battery in smartwatch mode and 24 hours of battery in GPS mode, not playing music. Um, I haven't listened to music from this. I never run without my phone just from a safety perspective. So I'd always use, you know, listen to a podcast or music from my phone, not from the watch. Um, and I'd say it's about, that is about accurate. I think I tested it for a week, you know, running, mo well, doing exercise for at least an hour every day. Most days a bit more than that because I walk the dog for two hours and then go for a run as well. And I'd say it lasted about a week before needing to charge it and it is pretty quick, you know, charging. Um, so it is accurate. It is, I'd say, you know, you can, you could easily, easily, easily go away for a weekend and not have to charge this. Apple Watch, I'm looking at you, that you can't. You know, it is, it has a decent battery life. Um, and I'd say it's about accurate. I've probably charged it twice three times in the you know in the month or so i've been testing it so pretty good battery life for such a bright watch so the battery life has been better than i expected on the 40265 i'm honest i've been consistently getting four or five days out of it uh, with pretty heavy usage with notifications enabled so they're coming into the watch and then multi-band gps tracking enabled at all times and then looking probably at running you know over 10k a day on average uh, and it's yeah been lasting that amount of time which is the same actually as the garmin epics 2 last me with not being using music on the watch a lot that will really hammer the battery life and if you enable things like you know constant blood oxygen monitoring you can expect that to hammer it but with the always on screen on regular running notifications you are looking at kind of four or five days which is better certainly better than i expect and that's with the larger watch which is meant to have less battery life than the smaller one so the battery life is not like a strength per se compared to other garments some of those things like the enduro 2 and phoenix 7 and we're talking weeks rather than days but at the same time it's not really a big weakness here and it is a strength compared to when you think about other amoled screen watches if you're looking at smart watches they're gonna last you one or two days that kind of thing so yeah all in all pretty happy with the battery life if you want the amoled screen it's not going to mean that you're running for the charger every other day you're still going to get a few days of use out of this watch uh, quite reliably so a quick note on training readiness because I do think it's one of Garmin's best features. I think it's my favorite example of training analysis you get on any watch from any brand just because it's so clear, condensed into one color-coded stat you can have a quick look at and then there are more details there if you want to go and dive into them. If you're worried, if you're thinking why isn't my readiness high, you can go in and see, oh my heart rate variability was a bit off, I haven't been sleeping well, I've got a bit of stress in the body, that kind of thing. And in general it nearly always tallies up well with both how I feel and how I actually perform on the run. So it is a useful stat, you've got to get the best data into it though, so you've got to wear it to sleep if you can, uh, which is fine because this is a comfortable watch to wear at night, but also on the run I'd be looking at wearing a chest strap specifically for the purpose of getting accurate heart rate data in to the training readiness stat yeah all in all the training analysis in the watch is really good like there's you get a little bit more if you go up to the more expensive watches in garmin's range but even as a very keen runner there's nothing you know that's not on this watch that i really feel is missing readiness is the one i really wanted to see on a mid-range watch it's a shame it's not on the 400 255 but that's a, it's a big addition to the 265 in my opinion because because for me it takes a uh, one of the big reasons i might upgrade away it's now available on this watch other than that you've got the usual stuff like garmin's training status and uh, race prediction times which are always really harsh for me for some reason they never seem to uh, give me uh, times i can actually run even if i run them with the watch on but yeah it's a really good comprehensive training analysis package you're getting here. So on smarts, you've got the usual Garmin fare here, which is to say covers off a lot of essential smart features, but it's not a full smartwatch, mainly because the App Store just isn't there compared to things like uh, particularly the Apple App Store, but also Google Play. There are some useful apps in there, like I've got a parkrun barcode on here, and it's quite smart in the sense that I didn't have the app on my watch, finished the parkrun, realized I didn't have my barcode tag with me, and I was able to get the app onto the watch very quickly and use that to scan my barcode. So certainly a lot smarter than these sports watches used to be. And then you have obviously got uh, music storage and the ability to link up with things like Spotify which is all very easy to do if you've got premium accounts for your streaming services. You've got nice notifications, nice weather app, uh, you've got NFC payments with Garmin Pay that's really not as developed and accepted easily as things like Google Pay and Apple Pay but there are workarounds. You can get NFC payments on this watch. It's a lot easier in America certainly than it is in the UK but you know it's still not a full smartwatch. I wore this for a week alongside the Apple Watch Series 8 and basically outside of you know most of my activities I'll be deferring to looking at the Apple Watch. It's the more attractive, smarter watch you can use it for payments much more easily it's got a big app store but this is okay like it covers off some key smarts for sure obviously don't have maps either but you've got breadcrumb navigation which you know, most of the time is good enough Garmin probably not going to bring its maps to the mid-range watch for a long time. It's going to stay at things like the 965 and above, but you know, most of the time breadcrumb trails will get you where you need to go along with the back to start feature, of course. And then smartwatch mode, 
zone using it as a smartwatch. I think compared to the Apple Watch, I think that's probably the smartwatch most people would reach for. This is obviously a little bit lacking. The Apple Watch is like having an iPhone on your wrist. This definitely, definitely isn't. Um, the, the screen does make it feel a little bit more like a smartwatch. You know, the touch screen makes it feel more like a smartwatch. It is a responsive touch screen. There's none of this kind of lag that you sometimes get. Um, but I think compared to the likes of Apple, there isn't, you know, you can see your smartwatch notifications on here if you want, but you can't respond to them. And I think there's still, you know, you can download apps, but they're not that great. It's still a bit clunky as a smartwatch, but I would argue that this is a completely different debate. This is a smartwatch running watch debate that we don't need to get into now. You're not buying this Garmin to respond to WhatsApps and to check, you know, notifications. You're buying it to train as a training tool. And as a training tool, this is a million times better than the Apple Watch 8. So it's kind of what you're looking for. And I would say, you know, it's now probably about the same price point as an Apple Watch. And it really just depends what you're looking for in your watch. Um, but from a smartwatch perspective, it's probably not the best on the market. But, you know, it's not by no means is it the worst. It just, you know, I think Garmin needs to make their apps a little bit more a little bit better before you know you can really use it as a smart watch but as a running watch and as a running watch that you can definitely wear 24 7 get all your stats it looks great it, it ticks all the boxes but if you're buying a watch to you know check all your, all your notifications on the move and respond to messages and make phone calls you can't do it on here but you know you can do just about everything else. And from a training perspective, a million times better. So my verdict is, I love this little watch. It's a great upgrade on the 255. It's a great watch. I think I, I've been running with this more than my Phoenix lately, just because I love the screen. The screen really does elevate it and make it feel like a lot more premium. It's a lot bright, it's brighter, it's easier to see and I've absolutely loved training with it. I think there's, it's pretty much got most of the features that the higher end forerunners and the Phoenix line have now. So I can't really see why you'd opt for one of the more expensive forerunners now that this has been released. Really impressed with it, really loved it. Think it's a little bit more expensive than the 255, but I do think it's worth it. The screen is just excellent and the touch screen really does make it feel like a more premium watch. Yeah. So I've tested pretty much everything in the Garmin range except the new 4Runner 965. Hoping to start testing that soon. And I'd say overall, this is the watch I'd buy if I was looking at buying a Garmin right now. I'm a sucker for an AMOLED display. I really like training readiness and otherwise it hits pretty much everything I need uh, from my running watch. I, I do love Garmin's maps and I really like Climb Pro in particular, but at the same time, they're not 100% necessary for me, especially right now, the young family, I'm not going traveling very much. Uh, I'm nearly always on the same route. So I don't need to be navigating that much. So this is the watch that I think works the best and will suit probably most runners really very well. It's not to say it is the best Garmin, like obviously the 965 looks excellent. You've got the AMOLED screen, you've got maps. It's you know still a lightweight watch with a bigger, brighter screen than this. And then there are great deals available on the 4Runner 955 it will bring it very close to this. If you're not into the AMOLED screen and would rather have the maps, the 4Runner 955 will also offer you better battery life as well as those maps. And then, you know, you can go up into the realms of things like the Epix, it's got the AMOLED display, maps, it's got a bit of everything really, and then the long battery lives of the Phoenix uh, 7 and Enduro 2 ranges. But this really ticks off all the key features of those watches, I'd say now in a cheaper package, in a smaller, lighter package as well, which is more comfortable to wear all the time for me. Now, comparing it to the older two X5 watches, uh, I really hope this is more of an extension of the that range rather than you know a direct upgrade. That means we're gonna see those watches go away. Cause I think it's basically very nice to have the 255 and the 245 available, and then an AMOLED option as well, if you're willing to pay a bit more. That would be a better you know, range if they had training readiness on the 255 as well to give you a clear choice there. Do you want the AMOLED or do you want the no AMOLED? But you know, you now have to pay for the extra to get the AMOLED screen if you want the training readiness feature, which I think is a great feature. However, if you're not fussed about training readiness and the AMOLED, 4 on a 245 and 255 are both great watches, can be available in sales for a long time now, and they are you know, the better option if you're just not fussed about the screen at all. 245 is just a running watch, so it's great for runners. The two, but then the 255 is a multi-sport watch and actually adds the multi-band GPS as well. So that makes it a little bit more attractive. At the same time, if you find the 245 going for a song, you know, that's a great watch. You're not gonna get supported with any future software updates, but you 
have got an excellent running watch there that will cover up everything you really need. As always with Garmin, you've got to kind of pick your way through the range, deciding on what features are most important to you. Like I really like an AMOLED display, so this would be worth it for me and I like trading readiness, but if you're not fussed about those, the 255 is just as good a watch. It's available for a lot less. And then if you just want a running watch that does all the basics really well with breadcrumb navigation, the 245 is available uh, for even less than that. Outside of Garmin, I'm not really seeing a lot of sports watches in this price range that can really match up that well to what the 265 is offering with that bright display, the useful smart features, the excellent training analysis with training readiness, the accurate tracking. It's it's hard to top. Really, I think the best, the biggest competition will come from smartwatches, in particular the Apple Watch Series 8, which is obviously available for a little bit less than this watch. Now, like I say, I wore those two side by side, and there's a pretty clear distinction there. This is an Excellent sports watch, great native tracking, very good training analysis, you know, pretty useful smarts, but not a full smartwatch. Whereas the Apple Watch Series 8 is obviously an excellent smartwatch, great app store, looks fantastic, lovely to wear all the time and use, but not such a good sports watch. The native tracking has come along, it's pretty good now, but there's no training analysis or anything like that. And though you can raid the app store for superb workout apps that have better navigation than you'll get on the 265, you, you can't really get an app that has the training analysis of this and the ease of this, having all of its, you know, sports tracking, navigation features, everything like that baked into one device all done natively it's very smooth easy to use series 8 is a great sports tracker but just not quite as easy to use obviously the apple watch ultra will provide slightly sterner competition with the extra button and the dual band gps it has which you don't get on the series 8 but the ultra is a lot more expensive than 265 so it's more of a competitor to things like the epics and phoenix in my opinion when i was wearing those two watches it was very clear to me like outside of runs i'll be looking at the series 8 it's a smarter watch it's a nice looking watch enjoyed using it during runs i'd be using the 400 265 for the most accurate tracking and a better sports features all round so there is a bit of a choice there but both of them actually are great watches that will kind of do everything you need on both the smarts and sports front they just lean to having strengths in different areas obviously the apple watch is battery life it's only one day as well so that's something to consider so all in all this is a really great addition to garmin's range it gives people something that they want which is that mid-range forerunner with an amoled display it's a shame it's come with a big price jump but price isn't unreasonable looking around the rest of the market i don't think and you, and you still have those cheaper options which do nearly everything this does it's a shame the 255 doesn't have readiness but Otherwise, it's a fantastic all-round watch without the AMOLED screens. So you'll get slightly better battery life if you're not too fussed about that bright display.